It is the busiest exploration area on the planet. And today we return to the north of Latin America to look at what's been happening in Guyana and Suriname recently. I hope you enjoy. So here's the news update for first quarter 2023, covering the Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago area. In the news today, we're going to look at uh, the story so far, what's been happening on Guyana and Suriname uh, throughout 2023, and also what's going to be coming up in the rest of the year. For Trinidad and Tobago, we're going to have a look at uh, an onshore update, and in all areas, we're going to uh, bring news of uh, any licensed round activities. Starting with uh, Guyana and Suriname, and looking back at what's been happening so far this year. In Block 58 in uh, Suriname, um, operated by uh, the sort of Total Energies APA Corporation, I think that used to be, that's the new name for Apache, there was an announcement of the uh, second successful flow test at the uh, Sapacara South, the SPS2 well. Now, the well found 36 metres of net oil pay in the high-quality Campanian Maastrichtian sands. Now, this has added somewhere in the region of uh, another 200 million barrels of oil in place. And the total now for the uh, Sapacara region is uh, somewhere in the region of uh, 600 million barrels, we understand. Now, also um, this quarter, appraisal drilling is underway on Krabdagu. Now, we featured Krabdagu in a, a video a few months ago. And this is the, uh, the Krabdagu number three well, which uh, spudded in uh, February 2023. Um, just point out on this map for, for, for those who are more familiar with the Gulf of Mexico, there, there's, a, there's the size of a standard Gulf of Mexico block. Um, and you can see that blocks in, uh, in Suriname and indeed in um, Guyana, uh, they, are, they are huge by comparison. Suriname uh, is about to uh, about to close the bidding round in uh, in late April. The round opened in back in November in, in 2022. Now it features uh, six blocks in this area here, and uh, you can see it's the uh, Demerara bid round, as it's known. The water depths in this region are somewhere in the order of uh, 400 to uh, 3,500 meters, so very deep water areas to deep to ultra deep water. Now, if we look in a bit more detail in this region, and again, you can see the outline of the blocks here in, in orange. This is the bid round, and the six blocks are highlighted. On this slide, we're looking at the uh, the seismic, and you can see that uh, there is a, in the western side, there is a coarse grid of uh, 2005 uh, Occidental 2D data. And then, of course, there's the uh, Demerara Plateau uh, 2D, which was shot in 2012. Down in the southwest region, there are three... 3D surveys shot uh, in the sort of the last 10 years here by Tullo, Cosmos, and again, Tullo in this region. Taking a, a closer look of the uh, Block 63 area located here in the southwest, uh, and you can see that uh, this is uh, data that uh, CGG, BGP, and TGS um, combined have, uh, they've completed a, a PSDM fast track reprocessing over this region here, this 3D. They've also reprocessed some of these uh, these seismic lines, uh, so good ties to uh, nearby wells. And, um, and what they're uh, stating is that uh, the advanced imaging technologies have revealed um, several direct hydrocarbon indicators in in several uh, Cretaceous formations. So get in touch with CGG uh, if you'd like to find out more about that. The licensing round in Guyana was opened in uh, December and is expected, uh, or should have closed on the 14th of April 2023. 14 blocks on offer, and uh, we covered these in a, in a previous video. There'll be a link uh, down below. The licensed area is shown in this uh, this very light blue area here, or greenish area, and uh, you can see that these are the the blocks here on the on the shelfal area, and also in the uh, I think this is ultra deep water in this region out here. So we'll wait and we'll report on any news that comes out from. Uh, when when the awards are made in that region here, uh, Exxon Mobil. This is the uh, the Sturbrook block, and they 
basically need to decide there's a statutory relinquishment uh, some 20 percent of the area needs to be relinquished um i th- understand that they've uh, actually negotiated an extension so there is uh, ongoing uh, plans for imminent um, drilling activity in the block and so I, I guess they've negotiated uh, an extension to that to to find out the results of uh, that drilling operation and we'll look at that in a few minutes um, now if we concentrate on Starbrook and uh, it's now uh, it's now up to 31 discoveries uh, and you can see on the map up here uh, it's becoming one huge enormous accumulation but uh, they are actually still broken out individually uh, as little pools at, at perhaps different stratigraphic levels but um, you can see that it's been a prolific area billions of barrels of oil have been found the the latest is uh, highlighted here on the map at Fangtooth southeast um, it was uh, reported in the uh, uh, well, drilling in December 2022. And uh, the expectation is that there are going to be 10 more uh, exploration and appraisal wells in 2023. Now, the aim is uh, also that uh, the PIAR FPSO, which is now uh, has now arrived in country, uh, should be commissioned and be producing by before the end of 2023. It'll be the third FPSO um, with uh, 220,000 barrels of or barrels per day oil capacity from the uh, the 41 wells. That's uh, 20 producers and, and 21 water injectors. So a very very busy area, um, probably the the hottest exploration area on the planet now if we take a quick look at the upcoming and uh, wells that are, are currently drilling so starting with guyana and uh, cgx in the uh, quarantine block uh, which is highlighted here this this block uh, this yellow block here that runs up. Now, we've previously done a, uh, an extensive video on the uh, results of the Carwell One well, which was a, a light oil and condensate discovery. Now, the uh, the the Y Way One um, sputtered back in uh, in January, and it was expected to take somewhere in the region of four to five months to drill. So, uh, watch this space. We'll report on uh, on on any news uh, that comes out of that. It's it's again targeting the Maastrichtian campaign in the Santonian channels and, and fans uh, that we've seen, and uh, we we can see uh, here's the uh, here's the targets for the well highlighted in this uh, in this section here the well will both appraise um, the car war one discovery but also explore additional um, stratigraphic intervals within the uh, within the quarantine block so where one is uh, an analog to Kawa and if we actually look uh, from within trove you can see the amount of information that we hold for the uh, Kawa one discovery and uh, you can see we've got maps we've got uh, structure maps uh, various um, and I think thickness maps, we've got uh, seismic sections, we've got detail write-ups and some volumetrics in here. A lot of information, uh, which we'll add to as more and more, um, more and more becomes known and put into the public domain uh, on this well and others in the area. So we've got a lot of information. If we look in a little bit more detail here, you can see that in the in terms of prospectivity, lots of information on what the uh, what the two wells are targeting uh, in this region here. Um, in another area of the, uh, we we can look at the stratigraphy. We can look at the uh, the attributes and uh, the depth and structure maps. Uh, we can also move across and uh, go and have a look at a seismic section to show what. Uh, uh, and and this is the um, the anomaly, the seismic, the the bright uh, that was actually targeted with the uh, the Carwell One well. And finally, if we just go up here, we can even get a picture of the of the rig that was used to, to drill the well. So this is a lot of information that you get uh, in troves and uh, useful useful to have. So returning to Starbrook in Guyana and uh, operator ExxonMobil, along with partners Hess and Seanook, they are drilling the, uh, the, the Lancet fish well, which is highlighted on the map here. Uh, it's sputtered in December 2022. No results as yet, but uh, it's approximately two and a half miles north 
southeast of Fangtooth Southeast Wanwell. So um, we should uh, know the results of that in the next uh, month or two. Two additional wells uh, were planned to spud by the close of Q1. That's the uh, Basher well, which is uh, shown here in the very northwest of the region. Um, that's targeting a deep prospect west of Fangtooth. And uh, the Blackfin which is uh, sort of in the centre uh, area there, and it's targeting an updip prospect east of the barrel eye discovery. Uh, additionally, we've got the uh, the tarpon one or the uh, tarpon fish one. Um, it's the first well testing Cretaceous Age clastic reservoirs in northwest Starbrook block. Now it's off this map, um, and uh, well, we found out what a tarpon was, and and and, and there uh, there it is. It's actually. Uh, plan to test a, a deeper Jurassic Age carbonate prospect. Additionally, within Starbrook, we've got the Kokwari One. Um, ExxonMobil uh, going to be drilling that with the uh, Stenner Ice Max, and it's uh, in the northwest portion of the Starbrook block. This is probably the well that um, negotiated sort of the extension so that they can actually uh, um, evaluate the uh, the block. Now, this isn't its current location because there's certainly no, uh, uh, no island nearby where the uh, the Stenner Ice Max will be in the offshore waters here, but it's um, going to be drilled in, in water depths of uh, around about uh, 2,000 metres, we understand. Moving uh, moving to the west from the Starbrook block and moving into the Orenduk block, which is uh, Total Energy's Eco-Atlantic and Tullow Oil, and it's the Amatuk um, prospect that's going to be drilled. Here it is located in the western part of the block here. Now, uh, this is the, uh, the analysis is, is based on a, a 2020 competent persons report by... Gustavuson Associates. Uh, the prospect lies above a, an upper Cretaceous channel fill, which runs from the southwest up to the uh, to the north. Now it's still actually up on the shelf, and uh, really even uh, the deepest. It, it's only just getting past a hundred meters water depth, so relatively shallow well for the area. The prospect is some sixty eight. Uh, square kilometers in size and um, it's estimated to have some in the region of uh, 270 million barrels of oil in place at a 29 percent chance of success Moving across the border into Suriname now and having a look at Block 42. And uh, this is the uh, the Walker well highlighted here, which was uh, oil price did a, uh, a, a wells to watch for 2023. And uh, this was in their top five. Now, uh, Shell um, to drill the well in 2023, a block formerly operated by uh, by Cosmos Energy. The Walker prospect is, is a, a carbonate prospect similar or analogous to the to the ranger discovery that was made right up to the uh, the northwest of um of the starbrook block and uh, you can see on this uh, section here that uh, here's the location of the ranger uh, carbonate build up over in guyana and looking across here uh, on the other side of the basin here's the uh, location of the walker carbonate reef build up interesting to see what uh, comes up here the um the Walker One well will also test this channel here called the Aurora Channel Complex. So a dual target in this well. Partners in the block with Shell include uh, Hess and Chevron. Now if we move across to Trinidad and Tobago, uh, onshore now and looking at the Ottawa block, which is a uh, touchstone. And uh, they've um, now started to drill the, the Royston 1X uh, in April 2023. The, the Royston 1 well itself was drilled in 2021 and it found um, 33 API oil uh, in overthrust and, and uh, intermediate sheets whatever that means but Royston Monex is planned to evaluate the deeper Herrera formation uh, it's going to be drilled with the uh, the Star Valley rig 25 and you can see that uh, here is here's the region it's uh, over in the in the east the southeast of, of Trinidad uh, and more detail of the block and you can see some of the nearby fields and, and prospects shown in here so here's uh, information uh, off the uh, off the Touchstone website, uh, a, a map for the Royston and a seismic line showing the target, uh, an offset well shown here. And uh, the, the, here's the light oil discovery, um, uh, talking about uh, 3.5 million barrels. So onshore, much smaller sized um, reserves potential, but uh, it could still be very economic and lucrative because uh, obviously operations are 
a, a lot less expensive than deep water drilling. And uh, potential development here at Royston, well, if it all works out, uh, it could be that um, they go ahead with sort of a seven well program and, and the sort of the outline shown here um, on success. There's some more details. Uh, pause the video and, and have a look at that. And finally, in Trinidad, uh, another prospect that uh, is preparing to drill is the uh, Trinity um, prospect, the Jacobin uh, structural prospect. It's down here in WA56, uh, highlighted just uh, on shore here, southwest Trinidad. And it's uh, targeting the lower crews, the Miocene Age turbidite sands, which are a major reservoir throughout this region in the uh, Palo Seco region. Now, uh, the mean oil in place here, only some 5.7 million barrels, but it's onshore. It's a relatively uh, um, cheap operation and uh, should be, uh, should be uh, highly economic. So the uh, Trinidad uh, onshore um, and nearshore bidding round closed in first quarter of 2023. Um, there were 16 bids for eight onshore blocks. And uh, there is uh, some of the uh, highlighted bidders, Primary, Eco, Challenger, Trinity and Hunter. Um, awards expected in uh, Q2 23. So that's uh, around about uh, three or four months uh, turnaround, which I think is uh, is an appropriate time for a licensing round. Um, when we uh, look here, we can see on the map that uh, the uh, in white open blocks, uh, presumably these were not applied for. In in the sort of reddish colour or pinkish colour is the uh, licensed acreage, and then you can see the uh, these are the areas that uh, that have been um, bid submitted. We'll, we'll wait and see the uh, the outcome of that round, and we'll report back on it uh, at the appropriate time. So for Trinidad and Tobago uh, offshore, um, and you can see here Trinidad and Tobago, uh, this is the region known as the, uh, the, the shallow water acreage. Um, the bid round closed in fourth quarter 2022. There were 23 blocks on offer. Um, they are the ones highlighted here in orange. The licensed areas are shown in red. And um, basically in January of this year, there was a, a new offshore gas auction announced with uh, up to 20 blocks with some revamped terms. Now, uh, notably, uh, the new tax terms... Uh, Assigned a 12.5% 12 12 royalty on producers' gas profits instead of on the on their gross production. So um, we'll see if that has any uh, effect on drawing uh, interest into offshore Trinidad and Tobago. Um, here's a here's a map. Uh, Eddie Ong busy again. Um, well done, Eddie. Great, uh, great work. And this is showing the the region. Pause the video and have a look. Here's the uh, the Orinoco Belt. Some, um, well, so I think two hundred and seventy billion barrels of oil. Venezuela has got the largest reserves of of oil in the world, bigger than Saudi Arabia. And uh, you can see the size of uh, Orinoco heavy oil belt, plus uh, the Machuan base in the Maracaibo um, and various other regions and, and some of the gas that's offshore. Um, compare that, really. Here's uh, a few years ago, there would be nothing down here, but now we can see all the discoveries in Starbrook, in uh, Quarantine, and across into um, Block 58 in, in Suriname. And, and you can see that uh, this region is, is growing in stature and size and uh, and really very very uh, important area um, other features in here this is the onshore Suriname this is the Calcutta and um, uh, field and um, I've forgotten the name of the other one and then uh, here's uh, well here's El Furiel um, major field 26 billion barrels but uh, um, we might feature this in a in a video um, didn't really uh, production has has struggled in in recent uh, in recent years as it has for the entirety of Venezuela in fact and uh, here we can see Trinidad major discoveries on the southern southern uh, coast so in summary uh, in the Starbrook block uh, Exxon Mobil busy ten wells uh, in 2023 uh, some underway um, but all lined up um, that there will be appraisal drilling as well. Uh, 
I think included in that number. Um, in Orenduk and the Quarantine blocks, uh, we also have pl- drilling underway or planned imminently. Suriname, Crab Dagu's on its way down. Walker, uh, we've discussed uh, across in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we await the results of the uh, the, the Royston One X and the uh, Jacobin onshore. Small beer, but uh, you know significant for the region, and um, we keep an eye on all of that. It is uh, really one of the most active exploration areas on the planet and it's still delivering so uh, watch this space as we um, as we continue to the videos now previous videos that we've done while well, we're showing them here there's now um, this is the sixth video we've done and then just uh, just so sort of, uh, we only started doing these about a year ago so uh, so make sure that you subscribe to our channel um, give us a, a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and please support the channel in that way. And then if you ring the bell, you'll be informed when we come out with a, a new video. Well, what I particularly like about our uh, our series on uh, Latin America North, as we call it, um, the, the region, Guyana and Suriname primarily, but also uh, Trinidad, Tobago, um, is that it's a fast, fast moving area. I mean, this is probably about the fifth video we've done over the last year. So every few months we come up with an uh, up with an update. And I think actually, if you look through the uh, progression of uh, videos, which uh, are actually in a playlist, so you can actually watch them from, from start to finish as it were, you can see the, the huge development there's been and it's a very, very fast moving province. So we look forward uh, to uh, continuing to keep uh, everybody up to speed with what's happening in this area. And please, if you've got information, um, send it in. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, to include that in a future video. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Look forward to having you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.